Holy guacamole. Look at the size of this. This thing's just a behemoth. All right, guys. Stock shield with deflector extender. V v stream. Oh my god. You need like sirens and lights. So you're sick of the windscreen that came with your motorcycle and you've taken to the internet to Google windscreens for your particular bike model. Let's talk about it. Now the first thing you got to know about most motorcycles that come with a windscreen like this here, this comes from a Tiger 1200, my Tiger 1200, is that they actually put the windscreens on there mostly to fit in the aesthetic of the bike so that it looks good when you're buying it. Most windscreens weren't necessarily wind tunnel designed. Uh, some are, however. This particular windscreen that came on a 2012 Tiger 1200 was abysmal. As giant as it is, it's completely awful. It does a lot of things wrong. The wind hits it and goes immediately. It doesn't ramp up. It doesn't get, you know, it doesn't really lift it no matter what the angle. Uh, it causes a vacuum force that basically it feels like hammers hitting your helmet. We then come to our next problem the price of these windscreens. Aftermarket windscreens are very expensive. If you ask me, it's plastic after all, or Lexan. You're gonna be looking at about 200 to 350, maybe even $400 for an aftermarket windscreen. And you have no way of testing it to see just how good it is. All you can go by is the reviews. Well, that's good and bad. Some people, after all, get on these websites and maybe the shipping instructions got screwed up so they leave a one star review or maybe they got a defective one that's missing a part. Well, it's not really fair to give it a one star because of the distribution center screwing up the order. It totally masks the, the intent of a good review system. Now in my case, going from this Tiger factory windscreen, I knew that I absolutely hated this windscreen and I knew that if I went to enough sources for info I could find at least enough consensus to say, yes, this is a good windscreen. Now there's some common brands you're gonna hear out there. Madstad, Puge or Puig. You're gonna hear uh, V-Stream, National V-Stream or Ni National Cycles V-Stream. Uh, Clockwork, it's, you know, it depends on the type of bike you ride also. If you're a metric bike, you're probably gonna be steered toward a Puge or a V-Stream. Now as you can see, this National Cycles V-Stream tall touring screen is huge. Now that's for this bike model specifically. It does a pretty good job of getting the wind out and deflected away from me here and flipped up over my head. <clears throat> now I am a particularly tall rider, so I still get a little wind hitting me, so I have this deflector up top. Now at some point you're going to hit the good old law of diminishing returns. That is to say, at some point you're looking through the windscreen and that's not that fun. You get a little bit of distortion and that's on any windscreen that you're looking through, especially one that's got dynamic shape to it. Add on top of that my wind deflector, which absolutely adds to the lack of clarity in viewing. Now I've put Puge windscreens on, I've put other brands as well. I have to say this V-Stream works about the best that I've had, and it's also the biggest. Thankfully with this particular model, I can just pop this windscreen on and put on the old factory one if I want to do some off-roading, or I can just take it off and ride without one. Now I've ridden with this screen for about a thousand miles and there's a big reason why it wouldn't be that beneficial for me to throw the camera on right now and just go shoot the video. It seems to me that the temperature, the direction of wind has a big effect on just how effective this windscreen is. Some days no wind at all and it's so quiet going 70 miles an hour that I can listen to talk radio without earplugs going down the highway. Yesterday however I'm riding and it was definitely loud even with the giant windscreen. In that particular case, it's because I had a crosswind. Well, guys, I can't control the wind. So it would be a disservice to show you a really quiet day, and then you buy this and you have a lot of buffeting. Uh, it would also be a disservice to show you a really loud day. 
and it would be, you know, it would make it seem like it did nothing. The truth about these windscreens is they're somewhat situational. Now other factors like the shape of the windscreen play a big effect as well. So just having a big shield in front of you isn't really all that you need. Think if you will about a Harley Electroglide. You see those with the big bat wing in the front and they put the little tiny windscreen above it. But if you look really close, the aftermarket shields like Clockworks angle up and away and they are designed so that it shoots the air up away from the rider and you actually get a huge calm area behind that even though it's a teeny tiny windscreen. Now on this adventure bike the placement of the screen is way down low in comparison to the rider so it would have to be a very large screen to give you that same effect. So I'll give you my opinion of the National Cycles V-Stream. Well it's pretty good. I'm pretty happy with it. That is to say it's not perfect. There's some things I don't care for and believe it or not as big as it is I ended up having to put this on it so that kind of tells you that uh, it's, it's not really a one-size-fits-all game depending on how you're built and how tall you are. Most days this works really well and absolutely it's a massive improvement over the stock shield. Now in the past when I've used Puge shields they were improvements as well. Now Puge typically makes their shields more narrow and if you go and look at even for this bike you'd be bringing this portion of the shield uh, to about here up top. They tend to start big and taper. Now that's not to say it doesn't work, but I typically find that this works better. Now it was a little more expensive, but that's kind of the name of the game. Some other fancier shields like Madstad actually have deflector accessories you can buy that mount to the bike. So you can even add more to the actual bodywork to deflect that wind. So to wrap it up, do your research and do a lot of research. Check out the forums, check out Revzilla, Amazon, wherever you're buying from. Uh, you know, depending on what country you're in, as many resources as possible to see what do people think of that windscreen. Keep in mind that whenever you put one of these windscreens on, it's not going to add any value to the bike. So you're basically losing this money. I have a real nasty habit of putting a windscreen on a bike and then finding another bike I like and trading it off and I just lost 300 bucks. I guess to their advantage. Check in the forums about how tall the riders were Ideally, a good reviewer would tell you that. Now, I'm 6'4", 6'3", I'm shrinking, I'm sure, but still tall enough that the wind really catches me up top. So, uh, you know, I'm going to let you know, even at the tallest setting for this bike, I am having wind hit me in the head. And one more thing that you can consider is your helmet. Now, I recently updated to this very fancy premium Arai Signet X helmet, which I am very happy with and I'm going to do a review on. However, the thing that I want to bring to the table is this helmet manages the wind much better than this cheap skate Scorpion. This piece of junk right here, well, it got me through some good times, but it's retired to the shelf now. It's like this. Well guys, I hope that helps you out. I just want you to think about what you're buying before you buy it. That's really the best answer I can give you. Keep in mind that the same touring windscreen from National Cycles is going to look different from bike to bike. The FJR 1300 has a much different shape windscreen, so the entire thing is different than on my Tiger 1200. So sometimes these reviews may not have anything to do with the bike that you're on. Hey, they're manufacturing. They want to sell it to as many bikes as possible. Well, I hope that helps you out. And if you like anything about this video, please consider subscribing. I'm having a great time making these videos, and I'm going to do my best to keep the content coming out. I'll be reviewing that Arai helmet soon, and I'll let you know, is that something that's worth your hard-earned cash? So, with that said, ride safe. I'll catch you next time. See you later.